What's going on guys? Welcome back to another training. I want to break down how you guys should structure your sales calls so you guys can land more fitness clients. Now, a huge problem that I had as a fitness coach when I was first starting was that I literally did not know how to sell. And back when I was 17, 18, 19, first starting my entrepreneurial journey, I put so much time and attention on building products, creating content, marketing, and I put zero time and attention in to sales. I thought that if you build a good product and if you market and you create content, people are just going to want to sign up, but that could not be further from the truth. And not learning this skill, not developing this skill actually kept me broke for many, many years that I could have been making money had I learned this skill. And I'll actually never forget the time. It was around 2018, 2019, where I finally learned how to sell fitness programs. And I'm telling you, my life changed dramatically. At the time, I was selling online fitness coaching and I would have people opting in and I would just be so excited that someone was interested that I would just word vomit my entire offer and hope that they signed up. And sure, I got a couple clients here and there. I was making around two to three grand a month, but I really could not bridge the gap on how anyone was able to make 10, 15, $20,000 a month fitness coaching. It just didn't make sense to me. And then I hired my first mentor. His name is Ross Johnson and he taught me how to sell. Well, he taught me the intro to selling. But once I understood, hey, my problem is not in my marketing. It's not in my product. It's not in my content. It's that I suck at sales. Then I went into a full deep dive on sales training. I learned everything that I could about sales. And I kid you not, I scaled my business from two to three grand a month up to 10 grand a month within 45 days of learning sales. And I'll never forget around that time, I read this book called The Way of the Wolf. If you guys have not read it, it's by Jordan Belfort. Really, really fantastic book on sales. Really helped me understand the psychology of sales. And then I took courses online to learn sales. I watched every single YouTube video I could about handling objections. And I would just book calls like crazy. I would take calls. I'd record them. I'd study my scripts. I'd have my scripts laid out in front of me. And I probably took hundreds, if not thousands of sales calls myself. And over the years, I've been able to really fine tune my sales process and now teach it to personal trainers who are just starting their journey as well. However, the problem is a lot of coaches who are coming into this get a little bit overwhelmed when it comes to learning everything there is about sales. And so I wanted to create this training to break down the framework on how you should approach your sales because it's going to make it super, super simple. Now, during this time as well, I was doing a lot of practice. I was every single time I had a call, I would replay the call in my head while I was in the shower. You know, some people sing in the shower. I was practicing sales in the shower. I would, I would replay, you know, the, the call that that I just took while I was in the shower and you know I'd say okay if he said this the next time I'm gonna say this and then he'll say this and then next time I'll say that and I really just role played with myself until I built confident skills in sales and I'm telling you guys it is the number one skill that you guys need to master in order for you to build a successful online coaching business so in this training I break down the simple three-step process for a sales call and let's go ahead and dive into it all right guys so we're going to break down the three-step process of of a sales call. Now, what I'm going to tell you guys is this is not everything you need to know. This is super high level. And so if you guys have sales experience, this will kind of help iron out some of the wrinkles that I see are big problems and big challenges that people face when it comes to taking sales calls. But if you guys have never taken sales calls before, if this is brand new to you, you've never closed a client over the phone, then I really highly recommend you check out PTBI, which is the Personal Trainers Business Incubator. It's our program that works with trainers to help them start and scale their business. This. Sales is a huge focus that we help our clients develop. We provide the scripts, we provide the frameworks, and we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and feedback to ensure that all of our clients are successful when it comes to signing fitness coaching clients. So I just want to put that little disclaimer on there. This isn't going to be the end all be all. This is just going to be one piece of the puzzle. If you guys want more specific help and actually knowing exactly what to say on sales calls so you can sign clients, then check out the link down in the description box. You'll be able to find more information on on the personal trainers business incubator, but let's go ahead and dive in. So first thing I want to say is that if you want to make money, you need to master sales. I've seen this time and time again, where the best coaches in the industry, the people with doctorates, bachelors, certifications, college contracts, they're broke, right? They know so much about fitness, so much about training, so much about nutrition, but they know nothing about sales. And because they know nothing about sales, they're at the whim of working nine to five at a gym, getting clients fed to them because they don't know how to feed themselves. So I'm just going to tell you right now, you don't need to be the most decorated fitness coach out there to make a lot of money. Hell, our clients,
clients that are making 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a month don't have anything more than a certification, but they are very skilled in sales. And that sk sales skills allows them to charge what they're worth, work through objections, get people excited and motivated to join their program. So I want you to know that sales is a vital skill for success. Now, the problem is fitness coaches have never been properly trained in sales. Think about it like this. When you go and get a certification from NASM or ISSA, they're going to teach you everything you need to know to train a client in person, but they're not going to teach you how to sign a client. Actually, what they're relying on is that you go get a job at a gym and they have a sales team that provides clients for you. And hey, that's totally fine if you want to be working minimum wage at a gym on the floor nine eight or from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. every single day to make minimum wage. That's totally fine. But if you want to work for yourself, have freedom for yourself, make 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars a month, you need to master sales. Problem is fitness coaches have never been properly trained in sales. That's where I struggled for a long time as well. I never had proper sales training because it's not something that you can just go learn in school. And there's so many different tactics, so many different variations, so many different approaches to sales that it could be very easy to get lost in the sauce. And lastly, a lot of people are turned off about the idea of sales because they think of a used car salesman. They think they have to be slimy, pushy, and they're like, oh, I don't really want to be slimy or pushy. I'm going to show you guys how you can come from a frame of motivation, inspiration, and getting people excited to buy your program without actually having to be pushy whatsoever. So if you think that you're going to present your program and get sales, you are setting yourself up for failure. This is where a lot of people, a lot of coaches go wrong. They launch their program online. They expect people to start signing up left and right. They think that they're just going to drop their prices, tell them how the program works, and it's going to be that easy. It is not. You are going to need to be a coach in the sales process to follow these few steps in order for you to get your clients excited to transform. So what you need is two things. You need a framework and you need training. You can't have one without the other. You need a framework to follow for sales and you need training and feedback to get help. So let's go ahead and dive into the framework. So the framework looks like this. There's three parts to a sales call. You have the front end of the sale, you have the offer, and you have the back end of the sale. The front end of the sale is everything leading up to presenting your program, essentially. The offer is where you actually present your program. And then lastly, on the back end is where you handle objections and you close the deal. So take a note of this, just break it down, super simple. There's three parts to a sales call. So the first part of the sales call is that you need to create a vision. You need to help your ideal client create a vision because at the end of the day, your client, your prospect, they're not buying your program. They're buying a transformation. And oftentimes they don't even know what their vision is. You'll likely hear that people, you know, want to be more consistent or they want to have more accountability, or they want to feel less puffy. These are very, very vague goals that when you get to the end of your sales call, it's very hard to hold someone accountable because if you're charging, say, $1,000 for a three-month program, it's very hard to get someone to part ways with $1,000 because they want to feel more accountable. And so your job in the first part of the sales call, we call this the discovery portion of the sales call, is to actually help them craft the vision that they can build up to, right? A really great vision would be, you know, waking up, it's spring break, they're hitting the beach, they're wearing their dream bikini, or the guys are in their swimsuits, they take their shirt off on the beach, and they feel confident. They've lost 10, 15, 20 pounds, they can see their six-pack abs for the first time, they're drinking margaritas without any concern of blowing their diet because they have intuition on nutrition and training, they've worked very hard from it, and they feel proud. That is a vision. Another vision could be you're at a country concert, and you put on your country boots, and you put on your red flannel, your red sleeveless flannel, and you're out line dancing and you feel confident because your arms look good. Whereas before you used to not put yourself out there because you never felt confident in the way you felt. You never felt confident in your body. And because of that, you never wanted to be seen. So you never went out dancing. You never put yourself in the limelight and you know, you just never live your fullest potential. So creating a vision is really, really painting a picture of what success looks like. So if someone comes in and says, Hey, I want to, I want more consistency. Okay. Well, what's coming up for you that we can work up to? Do you have a vacation coming up? Do you have a wedding coming up? Do you have a high school reunion coming up? Do you have a birthday party coming up? Like, let's set some type of end goal in mind that we can work our way up to so that way we can craft a vision of what that event is going to be like if you transform your body. Let's just say right now it's December 22nd and in three months it's going to be March. So it's going to be spring break in college. So let's say that we're talking to a college student and they have spring break and they're going to go to 
Cabo, Mexico. Like, okay, perfect. So I love the fact that you have Cabo coming up on the horizon. How do you want to look and feel when you wake up in Cabo? You know, are you going to be drinking? You're going to be partying? If you're going to be drinking and partying, how do you want to look and feel? I'm sure that you want to feel confident. Okay, but what does that look like? What does confidence look like? Does that mean having a flatter stomach? Does that mean having more toned arms? Does it mean having, you know, well-rounded shoulders? Does it mean just feeling strong in your body? Like you're not going to get tossed around in crowds and pushed around because you're so small, weak, and frail. You need to set some type of target in mind and really help them craft that vision because now that's what they're signing up for. They're not signing up for your program, but they're signing up for that vision for that transformation. And oftentimes people won't even know what the vision is. And so it's your responsibility as the coach to help plant that seed for their business. For me, I'm a business coach. I work with personal trainers. I work with fitness coaches and I want my clients to be successful. I want my students to be successful. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll plant seeds of success in their mind that they didn't even know were possible for themselves that I want them to achieve. So like personally, I love watches. I love Rolexes. And so sometimes I'll text my clients and be like, yo, you know, what Rolex are we going to get when you hit your first $15,000 month? And they're like, well, I never even thought about that. And I'm like, cool, but like, let's, let's plan it out. Let's look it out. Let's look at some watches. And so that way you have a vision to work towards. Now it's like, now I'm not working with them on like, oh, you know, we need to do more sales training. But it's like, no, we have an end goal in mind that you're going to reward yourself with. That's going to feel really good when you get there. So your job is to help them create the vision in the first part of the sale. Now, the second part is called product positioning. This is where you actually break down your program. So product positioning, there's two things. I want you to pay attention to this. There's product presenting, which is what a lot of people default to without proper training. And then there's product positioning. What I want you to know is that product presenting is not the way to go about sales. Product positioning is the way to successfully go about sales. Now, what I want you to know as well is that when you are presenting your offer or when you're positioning your offer, if you do it successfully, no single sales call will ever be the same. Every single sales call you that you take will be fully custom and different from the last, right? Why is that the case? If your program is your program and it's exactly the same from client to client, how is it that your product or how is it that your sales call is different? Well, the reason is because you're not talking about your program in the sense of you're going to get custom macros, you're going to get custom training, you're going to get one-on-one support. You're positioning your program to align the program as the vehicle that's going to get them to their goal. Now, remember, your prospects, your clients, they're not signing up for your program. They're signing up for the vision, the transformation for the vision. When they say yes and swipe their credit card and give you $1,000, it's not because they want your program. It's because they believe that you can help them get to their vision. And so you need to position your product in alignment with how they're going to get to their vision. So, you know, in PTBI, we have trainings on how to establish your pillars, how to establish your deliverables and really make your sales presentation or sales position presentation. I don't know. So I'm not going to dive into that in this training. If you guys want literally the keys to the castle, everything that we have to offer, just join PTBI. We literally give you everything on a silver platter. You don't have to think about, you know, how to build any of this up for yourself. But let's just say, for example, your pillars are training, nutrition, accountability. And with your pillars of training, nutrition, nutrition, accountability. Your methods of nutrition is tracking macros. Your method of training is progressive overload. Your method of accountability is one-on-one weekly check-ins, right? Pretty stock and standard fitness program. What you now need to do is not present your program where a lot of people will go wrong be like, hey, you know, so we're going to calculate your macros. We're going to give you custom macros. You're going to have access to this app where you'll be able to track your food. You're going to, you know, we're going to build you a custom workout plan so you can build some lean muscle. You can have a plan of action when you're in the gym. That way, you know, you can track your work workouts and we can see that you're progressing like that's really boring you're just presenting your program it's it's not custom it's not special there's no pizzazz but with product positioning what you're doing is that you're positioning those components as the thing that's going to get them to where they want to go. So everything gets tied back into the vision that's established on the front end of the sale. So using the same example, you can say, hey, our three pillars are nutrition, training, accountability. For nutrition, what we're going to do is we're going to build you a custom macro plan to ensure that you can lose up to 15 to 20 pounds of body fat and eat the foods you love so that you can show up in Cabo on your spring break in your dream body, feeling confident as hell and knowing exactly how to fuel yourself during that trip. So everything gets positioned for the vision. Same thing with training. So for training, we're going to build you a custom workout plan so you can know exactly what you're doing in the gym. And this custom workout plan is going to be designed to help you build lean muscle mass, have a nice shaped toned physique. Let's just say it's a female. Have a nice shapely toned physique. Build your glutes so that way when you show up in Cabo, your bikini is look the best you ever felt or the best you ever looked in a bikini 
bikini and all of your friends ask you what you've been doing to get in shape. They're all going to notice because they're going to see your body for the first time. They're going to say, what have you been doing? Have you been working out? And you're going to get all the attention you deserve for all the hard work that you've been putting in. Same offer. Once positioned, once presented. For accountability, you could say, hey, for accountability, we're going to have weekly one-on-one check-ins. That way we can ensure that you're staying consistent, staying motivated, and staying disciplined towards that goal of building your dream physique for your Cabo trip. Now, normally if you start a program, you go three weeks in, you fall off, you quit. You don't have anyone there to really keep you on track and keep you accountable. And so this accountability system will allow you to ensure that you're going to make it all the way to that trip and get the attention that you deserve since you make an offer. Now, like I mentioned, if you guys need help actually structuring your offer, what your pillars are going to be, what your deliverables are, check out the PTBI program. We got that for you. All you got to do is click the link down below. But my point is you don't want to present your offer. You want to position your offer. Make it custom. The reason why I say no one sales call is going to be alike because you could have the same exact program. One person wants to build lean muscle. One person wants to lose 10 pounds of body fat. So one, one pitch is going to be, hey, we're going to uh, build you custom macros so you could build lean muscle. The other pitch is going to be, hey, we're going to build you a custom macros so you can lose body fat. But again, you want to be a little bit more specific than that, but that's essentially the idea of positioning your product. You want it to be fluid. You want it to be chameleon-like and really make sure it aligns with exactly what they're looking for. Now, the last half of the sale, the back end, you want to hold them accountable to the vision. Now, you're likely going to get some objections here. This is going to be after the price is revealed. I'm not going to dive into objection handling in this lesson, we have tons of trainings on that inside of PTBI that you get access to as a student. So let's just say that you handle the financial objection. They said it's too much money. You work through their budget with them. You help them get access to credit. You help them find the resources. And now you know they have the money, but they're still not pulling the trigger. What you have to do is you have to hold them accountable to that vision. Earlier on this call, you told me that you wanted to feel, you wanted to feel confident. You wanted to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds of body fat. You wanted to build this lean muscle so that you can show up in Cabo in your absolute best shape, feeling confident with all the people around you giving you attention. Now, when you, make the decision to join this program, I want you to understand that you're not making the decision to do the work. You're making the decision to commit to that vision. So how do you want to feel when you wake up in Cabo? How do you want to look when you wake up in Cabo? Do you want to feel how you're feeling right now? Unconfident, uncertain, not wanting to take your shirt off, not wanting to talk to the opposite sex? Or do you want to achieve your vision and change your life and make this the most memorable experience that you've ever had, memorable trip that you've ever had? So what you want to do is handle the objections, but then tie it back to the original vision and realign them with the original vision and ask them, hey, at this point, you like the program. You know what it entails. We figured out, we worked through the objections that you have. Now we just need to get you to commit to the actual vision. So what do you want to do? Do you want to be the person who rises up and makes a change and achieves that vision? Or do you want to be the person who, you know, walks away and still struggles with the things that you told me that you're struggling with at the beginning of this call? Now, do you see why it's important to have a vision to hold them accountable to because if all they say is like, I want more accountability, I want more consistency, I want to feel less puffy, then when it comes to holding them accountable, it's really hard to hold them accountable to the work. Hey, you told me that you want more accountability or you told me that you want more consistency. It's like, oh, well, that's that's not powerful enough to get someone to want to sign up. But painting a very clear picture in their mind and holding them accountable to the vision on the back end of the sale will absolutely realign someone into signing up after you've handled their objection. So those are the three Three components of a sales call. You need to create their vision and you need to get very specific. You need to position your product, not present your product. And lastly, you need to hold them accountable to the vision. Everything that they said that they wanted to achieve, you need to ensure that that is their number one objective and their number one goal and make sure that their decisions align with achieving that goal. And if they're giving you objections, if they're giving you excuses, then you can call them out and say, hey, you know, right now you're telling me that, you know, you want to wait three weeks. You you want to you know, look over your finances, but you know, 30 minutes ago, you were telling me that your most important goal is to look great on your Cabo trip. You know, what do you feel is more important to you? Do you want to, you know, show up looking confident and looking good? Or do you want to wait three weeks and eventually decide that this program isn't for you and, and wake up and maybe not even go on the Cabo trip because you feel so poor? So everything is tied back to the vision. Now, what you need to do is you need to record your calls and you need to get feedback and you need to rinse and repeat. This is something that we have all of our students do inside of PTBI because we know that the first time you take sales calls, you're not gonna be good and that's okay. 
I wasn't good at my first sales call. It, I had to take thousands and thousands of sales calls in order for me to really, really be good and be able to, you know, close deals left and right. And so what I want you guys to understand is like, you need to go through a process where you get feedback and you get training so you can improve. A lot of times I'll see this happen. People will take the first five sales calls. They won't close a seal, single deal and then they'll get discouraged and then they'll quit. However, with our students, they record their first sales call. And even if they don't close a deal, they send it in for review. We point out all the areas in the call that they are lacking, that they missed, that they need to reframe. And we provide that feedback so that the next call they do even better. And it's a re rinse and repeat process until eventually they're closing every single deal that comes across the line. So that's what I got for you guys. Hope you guys got extreme value from this. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.